Three, two, one. Good day everyone, Garage King here, and today we're going to talk about scanners and, well, I guess over there, a code reader. How much do you have to spend, and really, do you have to spend this much, or can you just spend this much? Well, let's take a look. Here you go, you can see we have what I would consider a code reader, not even a scanner, and we'll do some tests in a moment, but I'll just sort of go through the gamut of what you can spend. This is about $25, and it's going to give you very basic information. Next up, we have a Bluetooth, this is by ThinkDag. It actually uses your phone as the scanner, and it sort of does everything in here. Not bad, for about $100, and it actually, believe it or not, it has some bi-directional capability. Once you start spending a few hundred dollars, maybe in the two to $300 range, give or take, you can start getting something like this. It might have a little bit of bi-directional capabilities, definitely not Bluetooth, it plugs in, but it's gonna give you more. It's gonna give you live data, you're gonna be able to graph, you're gonna be able to do a lot more resets. Then as you spend maybe around $500, you're gonna be able to get a scanner that has Bluetooth, that has you know bi-directional bi -directional capabilities, and it's gonna be able to do a lot more resets. Even here, if I press the reset button, and you can see we can actually reset quite a bit of stuff with this scanner. So it's got a lot of resets. Bi-directional capabilities actually aren't that bad on this scanner. Now, if we move up here, we have a launch here. This is a X431 Pro TT. This one here, you can see it is Bluetooth. Here's the, uh, I guess, Bluetooth transmitter. This one's going to be able to do a lot more here, even if I just click on service functions, just like this. And if we take a look, you can see here, we, there's a lot more. So we can just, you know, as you pay more, you're going to get more. Same thing here. We have a launch X431. This one is a Pro 3S Elite. Take a look at this. Uh, if you've seen my video when I've used this and you know, we'll do some tests. You can see as you're paying more, look at the size of this Bluetooth, uh, I guess, transmitter here. And this one also has SmartLink C. So you can connect anywhere in the world. You can do a whole bunch of stuff remote. This one really is a very, very advanced scanner. And in, even if we go here, service functions, let's go here. You can see it's got a ton of service functions, just a lot of stuff that it can do. And this one can just do so much more. Now, the other thing I should mention is the more you spend, the bigger real estate you're gonna get. And what I mean by that is the bigger screen you're gonna get. You can see the screens get considerably larger as you spend more. And the other thing is updates. Many people think that, you know, they, they always ask, oh, does it have free updates for life? Well, you know what? These ones have free updates for life. And the reason for that is, to be honest, they do a lot but they don't do what these ones will do. So anytime you're getting into professional scan tools, you're just gonna have to pay for updates. Usually they come with two to three years of updates once you buy them brand new, and then after that, there's a yearly subscription. So that's just how it is with expensive scanners, uh, no matter if it be Launch, Snap-on, Mac, Autel, it really doesn't matter. Xtool, they're all the same. All right, so let's start at the cheapest code reader. This one sells for about $25, super cheap. And you know what, to be honest, you'd be surprised what you get. So let's go through the menu here. And I will zoom in here just to show you what you can get. And you know what, to be honest, for $25, you actually get quite a bit of stuff here. You can see me using it. There's the I am readiness, not that it really means too much, but it's a basic code reader. And for $25, you can read codes, you can clear codes. And with this one, I believe you can even do a little bit of graphing and there's a live data, you can see there. It's fairly responsive, it doesn't have a big delay, which is really nice. Here's the graph, it obviously is not going to compare with the more expensive scanners, but you're still gonna be able to graph a few things, so that's all right. Next up here, we have the ThinkDag. So it's about 100 bucks and it's pretty crazy how it looks on my phone there. So everything is in this little brain. And here's a screenshot of my phone and you can see all the different vehicles that I'm doing. This one, four times as much, but really when you're talking four times 25, it's only a hundred bucks. It's not that much more. That's the data stream on my phone. I found when I used this one, there was a little bit of a delay, especially for a full vehicle scan. Here I had to really speed it up, but if you have the time, you know what? It'll do it. If you just want to wait and you don't mind waiting, that's fine too. Here's starter relay. So the bi-directional tests that it did do actually did work. So I was pretty impressed with that. And for a hundred bucks, you know, you don't have a lot to lose. Now here you can step up to a little bit bigger scanner. You can see there's four systems here, ABS, SRS, ECM, and TCM. And then there's the different softwares and the resets that you can do. So once you step up and spend a few hundred dollars, you, you do get quite a bit more. This one, as you can see, it actually has a touch screen. Uh, it's, it's not Bluetooth, but it does do 
quite a bit. The graphing abilities are really good as we will see in a minute. Vehicle coverage is really good. Normally never get an issue with that and you tend to find these ones on sale more. The only thing I do find that lacks a little bit in these ones is the bi-directional capability. I wouldn't consider resets as bi-directional capability. So this one again does a lot of resets. It does have some bi-directional capability but not a whole lot. But what it does do very well is provides you with any data that you need. And here you can see I'm scrolling in and it really depends, again, what you wanna use the scanner for. If you have an ABS problem and you're looking to find out, you know, if you have a bad wheel speed sensor, just like I'm graphing the accelerator opening angle right here, you can graph the wheel speed sensors and easily diagnose your problem. Okay, so let's step up again. Okay, so now you're gonna spend about $500. Well, as you can see here, you're going to get a browser, a much bigger screen, you're also going to get Bluetooth. More importantly, for a lot of you, you're going to get a lot more service functions. So for example, let's check out the hazards. There you go, you can see I just turned the hazards on. I'm, I'm in the body control module. And this just saves you a lot of time when you're checking simple things, just like I can check door locks. Uh, but more importantly, I can look at drivability problems. Each individual cylinder, there you go, you can see it's running rough. Smooth right out again. Running rough. Smooth out. What else do we have here? We can scroll down and we can see here are a bunch of actuation tests. And this is an interesting one. Cylinder cranking speed. So let's check it out. All right, so it's counting. It's gonna let us do this for 10 seconds. And then we also have to reset the computer once we're done. All right, so let's see our results. Hit the OK button, and there you can see cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three. There is a little bit of a variance there, but it still says pass. Cylinder five, I have no idea why it's 589%, but it's still passed, so that's all I'm concerned about. And then if you look at the bottom here, you can see the average right there, judgment threshold, 90%, so I guess that's good. And there were 43 readings that were taken. Now we're moving up to the Launch Pro TT and you can see it has many, many service functions right here. And I was looking for the instrument cluster for, you know, if you have to change the mileage on a vehicle or odometer correction. And it didn't have it. And for a pricey scanner, I thought it should, but you know what? I actually found it a different way later on. Instrument cluster. So there you go, want to replace it. So gauge lock release. Now it says the lock of the gauge control unit will be released. Is this the original gauge connected to the vehicle? I'm gonna cancel that, it is the original, but let's see if we can write data. Notice, readout data must be performed first. Okay, so the tester has no data about this vehicle. So let's read and let's see what happens. Okay, we'll go to read. Caution, once a tester has been read, the data cannot be rewritten to the original gauge. So it's gonna take the mileage off this cluster and it looks like it will transfer it to another cluster. So not wanting to replace the cluster just yet on this vehicle. So let's just leave that and we'll be okay. Now we can do a self-diagnostic on the gauge cluster and you can see there's a full gauge sweep as well as all the lights. Now, from the front page there you saw, you can get into a bunch of other stuff. Here is key programming. So you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff on key programming. If we go down here, here's another screen. Maybe if we click the actuator button, we can see what we can do. Let's just click actuator. There you go. And then you can see we can just turn things on and off. But I found these quick functions, what they do is they're just more generalized. We even have a scope. So if you click here, scope, there's sort of a demo of what a scope should look like. However, you do need to have scope leads. The scanner obviously can't read. You're gonna to have to put something on your high tension wires if you wanted to run a scope. And of course, a scanner at this price range already, you're gonna get really good live data and you're gonna get really good graphing. You can see here, I can overlay everything and it's just fabulous. So no worries there. Let's move on to the next one. So here we are with the Pro 3S Plus Elite. You can see there is a Bluetooth link right there. Make sure your Bluetooth link is working and you can see it's looking quite advanced. So how does this thing actually work in action when we're trying it? Well, let's see, let's find out. We go intelligent diagnosis and you can see there it's gonna read the vehicle VIN, it's gonna decode the VIN and then it's gonna pre-populate what it thinks our vehicle actually is. And if you're wondering if I sped this up, no, I didn't because I wanted to show you real time. There you go, it figured out it was a Lexus. So that's good. But before we get into diagnosing our Lexus, let's check out the special features and the service functions because that's what a lot of people wanna know. So here, if you can take a look, here is all the service functions. So it is packed full of service functions. I'll let you sort of look at them all, 
there's a quick scroll you can pause the video if you want so it does have a lot of service functions now I'm just it's hard to get it on the screen there you go there's the button there I'm going into the toolbox you can see it leads us into a sub menu where we can even go into an oscilloscope now obviously you have to buy the scope box and it's an attachment uh, I'm going into key programmer right now so let's see what it says and there you can see read transponder generate transponder um, you know remote function there's just a a ton of stuff in this so it, it is quite a bit I'll show you here the vehicle coverage I did speed that up because we don't want to wait for it to think for a second so here I'm scrolling through and you can see there's all the vehicle coverages so there is quite uh, a bit the one thing I did notice when we were going into vehicle coverage is you can see there's actually some special features in there too like you, if you saw um, for diesels uh, the, the regen it was in there as well some of the stuff there, there's seat occupancy calibration, steering angle reset. So some of it's in there, tire reset. I think this is just a screen where it's got absolutely everything in there. Here we go, odometer check. So it'll tell you the vehicle coverage for odometers, I guess working and changing odometers or if you have to do a correction on your mileage. So let's get into our topology mapping and there you can see there's a problem with the OBD. So there you go, P0420, there's a problem. We can actually hit code search, it's quite easy. And what it does is it'll bring up his browser and you can see all the common problems. And it knows we're working on a Lexus, so I think it searched for Lexus because I got lots of Lexus, Lexus stuff. So for now, let's just clear this. So we're gonna enter it. This function is used to test the OBD2. So let's get inside the brains of the computer right here. It's in process and there you can see DTCs in the ECU. So let's click on that one, let's click enter, and we're gonna clear it. So you can see right there, clear fault code. So we're gonna clear our fault code. Uh, yes, we wanna clear it. The DTCs have been cleared, so that's great. They'll probably come back, but they're cleared for now. Here I'm speeding up the video and you can see the topology is mapped and there's all our computers. So if you click on any computer there, there's body control module number five. And that one it says it controls the front lights. So we can go, okay, that's fine. And there we can find read data stream or there was actually actuation tests. Now here's another body control module. We click here and it says this one controls the wireless door lock security systems and also controls illumination for dome light and other things. So if I click on actuation test for this one, let's see what comes up. This is a different body control module and there you can see there's all the stuff there. I won't read it all out, but I'll scroll down and you can see tons of stuff. Here's our SRS. This one's kind of a little bit scary. We don't want airbags going off in our face but let's see what it does anyway. So let's click OK. And you know what? I decided not to go into the special test. Just didn't want to do it. So let's go into the ABS, something a little bit more safe for us. So we can look at our ABS and see what comes about here. You can see there's special functions on the one side, actuation test on the other side. So here's our special functions. So you can see there are a number of special functions. Actuation tests are a little bit different. Here is our actual actuation tests, if I can say that. So it's got quite a few of them. Now here, if we click ECM, so engine control module, so we're gonna probably get a ton of stuff in here because this is the actual engine control. So you can see there's special function, actuation test, there's all of our fault codes, tons of stuff in here. So if we're looking here, we can see here all the stuff we can activate. So these are our actuation tests. I'll just scroll through them and there's tons of stuff. Now, please keep in mind, each vehicle is gonna be a little bit different. So it just depends what the ECM will release to the scanner. Now, one other thing I did wanna mention is when you're on the topology map, you can see to the left, there's system topology, there's system list, there's ADAS calibration. Then you can go right into service function, customize setting and vehicle information. So it's actually really, really easy. So hopefully I didn't confuse you. And you know what? In conclusion, what you should spend on a scanner really depends on what you're capable of. Don't go out buying a really expensive scanner if you're not capable to interpret the data and fix your vehicle. Sometimes a cheap scanner is all you need to point you in the right direction. And if you find out that, hey, it's not for you, take it into the dealership. The Pro 3S Plus with topology was pretty advanced. And sometimes maybe all you need is a basic scanner like this. You can just pick body, chassis, powertrain, whatever you want, and do some simple diagnosis on your own. And you know what, if it goes over your head, you're best left to take it to the dealership. So that's it for this video. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Garage King, over and out.